Okay, I'm gonna do a dedicated video about hoses. Steve from Aircraft Specialty has been a huge help to me in designing plug and play hose kits for the Kit Fox Series 7, particularly also for the 912 IS Firewall Forward Kit. So I'm gonna go through all the hoses that Steve has done for me uh, that we uh, have basically collectively worked on together to get measurements and lengths right and fittings. And um, these are all available from Steve. Um, I'll put his booth number, he's at Oshkosh right now, so you guys can go talk to him about it. He does custom hoses, CNC work, um, he does stuff for v v vans already, I believe all the RV hose kits, like all the aluminum bended, uh, bent stuff comes from him, and then also Rands, and then maybe somebody else, some of the sort of kit OEMs he does actual work for, but he's done a full-on stainless braided PTFE line integral fire sleeve kit for fuel, oil, coolant, and brake lines for the whole Kit Fox 7. So starting with, we're gonna start with um, the oil system, which I've already talked about. I'm gonna give a breakdown of all the hoses and how they're installed. And then we'll talk about the fuel system, break down how all those are hoses are installed. And then um, we'll do brakes. And then I'll talk about uh, coolant, which um, is, Steve didn't do a whole lot on, but he has the measurements and can help you out with that. So here we go. Okay, we'll start at the oil reservoir, but let me start by just highlighting how awesome these are. This is integral fire sleeving. So what basically is in here is a stainless braided hose with a PTFE lining and then an integral fire sleeving on the outside. So this is actually glued to the top, then with solid stainless fully milled fittings on the flares. So these are really robust fittings that are good for 10 years, which is basically the life of the engine or airframe. Building them yourself would it'd be hard to get them to this quality, but it is technically possible to go buy all the specialty tools to do this. It's just a lot more efficient to just have somebody who's a professional do it for you. Steve also pressure tests these when they leave the shop, and you get a sheet that says, I have pressure tested these hoses, and there's a data tag on every single one with lengths and uh, part numbers for every single hose. So we'll start with the oil hose. This is 01, it comes out of the reservoir. This is for the 912 IS kit. There's a very similar kit for the 915 IS, uh, but this is, this is basically the setup for the 912 IS. The 912 series would also have a similar system, um, but we'll just start with the 912 IS. This also has an oil cooler thermostat and an oil cooler on it, so it ends up being about five hoses. So 01 comes out of the reservoir, comes across, it's two 90 degree fittings, and it goes where I've mounted my oil reservoir, which is right here on the, on the, uh, the back of the ring mount um, for the airplane. It's actually on the airframe side of the mount, air, ring mount, but. This is the top of O1 going into this oil cooler thermostat. Okay, so O2 and O3 come out of the bottom of the oil cooler thermostat. So they have straight fittings that go straight down and then have 45 stainless fittings that go into the cooler, across the cooler, back around and through, and up to the bottom of the thermostat. So that's O2 and 3. O4. Steve, came, Steve and I came up with this 180 degree bend design that's really cheap to make and easy to install. It's just a sort of AN bend that goes it around. Zo4 comes out of the cooler, or the thermostat underneath all the jugs around the side, and then there's a 90 degree fitting onto the oil pump housing. And then finally, O5 comes out of the aft port on this kit fox. You don't want it on the front port you want because the oil all settles in the back. So it comes out of the aft port, comes up and around. It's got a 90 degree fitting that goes back into the oil reservoir. This is just Tigon tubing that's provided, uh, but um, this is, you know, this is something I've considered replacing. I just stuck with the kit fox hoses, but Steve has offered to replace this for me. So it's a little more robust. Okay, now we're going to talk about the fuel system which is, we'll talk about what the hoses are on the firewall aft side. So firewall aft is the same for the 915 IS and the 912 IS. The 912 non-injected versions won't have this return line, but you can have the hoses the same for everything else. So the way, the way I have this set up with Steve's hoses comes, uh, let's see, out of the tank here, along the side. There's a one single straight stainless braided run all the way up to this valve this uh, shutoff valve right here. This is a CNC bent 90 degree fitting drop, drop 90, that is integral to the actual hose. You can see it's connected there. And that, that basically gets you down underneath the rudder cables and on top of all of your wiring so that uh, these are 
uh, basically not chafing on anything. Then it comes out, there's a 90 degree fitting that goes up to the firewall up there, it's a short hose. And then the return system goes from the firewall down and around. We have a 8L clamp set up here. There's two 8L clamps that mount to this uh, check valve. And then that's where that first hose connects. And then the second hose, final hose comes around and into the tank here. Um, so that's the full circuit. And then the numbers, the way I categorize these was in order of that, that install. So this I believe is FA firewall aft one. That's with the nut drop 90. FA2 is the short one. FA3 comes out of the firewall and comes to the check valve. And FA4 comes back into the return port on the tank. So these aft hoses are not, they do not have integral fire sleeving, but they are stainless braided PTFE lines with the static discharge line through them so that they don't uh, accumulate static, which is apparently a problem in fuel lines. Okay, we'll talk about the firewall forward side of this kit for the fuel lines. These are same as the oil lines, basically, which are here, except it's AN6, but same, still uh, integral fire sleeving with stainless PTFE lined, solid stainless milled fittings, very robust, 10 year life or the life of the engine. So this is uh, FF, so firewall forward, FF1 is a 90-90 that comes into the bottom port of the fuel, the in on the uh, fuel pumps. And then FF2 comes out of the fuel pumps and into the manifold, which this is exactly the same pretty much as the 915 system. Um, I think there might be one slight variant somewhere, but I'm pretty sure it's exactly the same dimensions. So Steve made this hose, this uh, tube for me. It's a 180 degree bend for aluminum that goes onto the fuel manifold, which there's the actual manifold back there. There's the pressure sensor in the back. And then uh, it comes out uh, to this fine filter into this T fitting and then around back to a check valve just in case uh, this gets clogged. So it's basically a bypass um, for the filter just in case it gets clogged. This is FF, let's see, we did one, two, this is FF3. It comes out of this T right here from the manifold up and across the engine. There's a 45 degree fitting that goes into the in port on the fuel rail on the co-pilot co side of the aircraft. So that's FF3. Then, you know, fuel comes across the rails, obviously. And FF4 is a straight 90, I believe. Yeah, it's a straight hose at the actual engine that runs back. And you can see it right in there where it comes back uh, into the firewall. Okay, the last one we'll talk about here is the brake hose system, which I've talked about in another video. Um, these are AN3 brake hoses. Again, solid stainless milled fittings, stainless PTFE lined hoses, stainless braided PTFE lined hoses. These ones actually have a rubberized coating on the outside so that they don't chafe on anything and they can't pick up any dirt and grime and dust. Really, really awesome hoses. Would 100% recommend these. They're going to be super robust. So the way I have this set up is there's a 90 that goes on this T fitting. It's an AN3 T fitting that comes out of the reservoir that comes around and that drops into the import on the pilot left side brake. And then we'll just deal with this up here. This one also, they run into the middle of the aircraft. This is for the co-pilot side and then it runs down from here. I have them together with some auto trim and then into the import on the co-pilot side. Uh, Sorry, on the pilot, the right side master cylinder on the pilot side. So there's your first two brake lines. And then, you know, this is, this is an order that they're made. So they're numbered basically as they go along here. So uh, the next one is the one that goes across the bottom of the aircraft. So this is the pilot master cylinder, left-hand side. It goes through the actual little hole on the brake mount. Then for the left side, it comes out of the bottom of that hole again, right there, and then comes up to the import on the left side brake. And then, of course, the right side one also has the same thing, except it comes over the top. Uh, it comes out of the bottom of the pilot side and then over the top to the import on the uh, co-pilot side. And then, of course, these run out of the bottom of the master cylinders 
this one runs down the back underneath um, in this little firewall well and then comes up and over the top into the brake valve, park brake valve. And then same thing with the co-pilot or the uh, left side co-pilot pedal comes out of the bottom, runs up and around and into the park brake valve. And then from the park brake valve, we've got our last two brake lines, they're the longest ones. They run from the park brake valve. It's a single run from the park brake valve all the way through the fire or the uh, fabric that just, I just poked a hole in there. Um, it's through two layers of fabric, so you're allowed to have holes in two layers of fabric. So poked a hole, comes out of the bottom of the airplane. This will show where that comes out, right on the back side of the, <coughs> of the uh, gear leg. And I actually have my lighting coming out of there as well. So poked a hole, comes down and runs the back of the gear leg, and then into a 90 degree fitting on the brake caliper. Okay, so that's all the hoses for that aircraft specialty has made for me. Um, and they are all available as a kit for the 912 IS and well some of the firewall aft stuff like the brakes and the firewall aft fuel lines are all available for all kit foxes um, that want, want to buy that kit. The way it's set up is it's all AN fittings and they're all stainless braided just hoses so there's no tubing bending involved and like no real measurement involved. You can just take these hoses from Steve and um, he'll also I mean, I bought all my own AN fittings, but it'll also sell you all the AN fittings. You get all your AN fittings, you hook those up, you can just screw the hoses right on, wrench them tight, and that's it. No bending, no cutting, no fabricating hoses or anything. It's just a kit that's plug and play from Steve. They're all stainless braided, PTFE lined, and really, really solid pressure tested lines that are uh, good to 10 years. The brake lines, I think, will be last longer than that, but. I'm really happy with the build quality on all of them. Everything's got a data tag on it with lengths and uh, I guess pressure capacity and then the part number as well, which is a really nice thing to have. So Steve is super helpful if you're ever doing a build project. I know all the vans have his stuff and I believe all the Rand's fuel kits have his stuff as well. So he's definitely capable. He's got, I'll put some links to some of his videos. He's got all these cool benders and CNC tricks and uh, if any of you are building planes and need hoses and you don't have a kit fox, he'll help you design a system that works for you uh, that uh, is basically two certified standards without you know, buying certified hoses. Thanks again, Steve, for helping me put the system together. I'm really happy with it and I feel confident now about these hoses, whereas if I put them together myself, they always would have been running in the back of my mind, you know, uh, just knowing I don't have all the right tools. So on that note, from an economic standpoint, I looked at the cost to buy all the proper tools for making really nice hoses. Now you can buy the just push lock stuff and that's easy, cheap, and you can do that. And you buy your own fire sleeving and just put it on that way. That's a cheap, very efficient way of doing it. They definitely work. They'll last probably a pretty long time. I don't know, maybe five years. I think there's a standard five year rubber replacement. And that's okay. That's totally optional. But if you want really nice hoses, to buy the equipment yourself and then buy all the parts, you cannot do it for less than what Steve does it for. So I did the math in my head. Originally I said there's no way I'm going to buy all these, these special bending tools to get all the mandrel bends and everything right. So I'm going to buy the hoses instead and either make my own hoses or buy the hoses. So I ended up saying I'm going to buy the hoses because making my own hoses if I wanted to do it really, really well with the stainless uh, PTFE line stuff, you need a special, some special tools. And I priced it all out, and it was cheaper for me to do it with Steve's than it was for me to go out and buy the kit and do it myself. So it just made sense. Yes, it's not cheap compared to just using the kit and building all of your own stuff. But um, it's definitely, if I didn't have to help design it, it definitely would have saved me a lot of time. And I will say, even having to go through all the design process, it did save me a lot of time uh, and effort and just will be a lot of stress on the road. So there you have it. Contact Steve. His information is in the description down below.